the Beverly Hillbillies. Can I have some Don't tea? bother me now, boy. I got a medical emergency. Where are you going, Granny? Medical emergency. Here I am, Ellie. Who's ailing? One of the neighbors? No, ma'am. It's Fairchild. Your bear? You call me the doctor of varmint? Fairchild ain't no varmint. Well, he ain't people, and I'm a people doctor. Well, take a look at him. He's breathing heavy, and he moans considerable, and his nose is warm. Please, doctor. Well, I have swore an oath to end suffering wherever I finds it. All right. Oh, thank you. Dr. Granny's gonna make you well, fair child. Stick out your tongue. <laughs> Maybe you'd better reach into his mouth and get it. Uh -huh. Now, let's hear how this chest sounds. Say 99. 99. He can't talk. Oh, I forgot. He's got the croup, Ellie. And a touch of the grizzly fever. Can you cure him? Oh, sure. I'll cook up a strong poultice for his chest. That'll draw out the inflammation. Now, you keep him warm. Yes? <laughs> oh, Miss Hathaway, there's an admiral here to see you. Admiral? Well, he's handsome enough to be an admiral. Divinely tall, broad shoulders. One of those rugged men of the See? Ask him to come in. Oh, if you're busy, I could entertain him. I'm not busy. Oh, too bad. Come in, sir. All right, girls, back to the secretarial pool. You may go too, Darlene. Yes, Lieutenant. Are you Jane Hathaway? That is correct. Miss Jane Hathaway. <laughs> I miss. Darling Mattingly. You may go, Miss Mattingly. My name is Templeton, then. Of course, Matthew Templeton. Well, you're the man I found in the forest. What forest is that? <laughs> you may go, Darlene. <laughs> that was my brother you found in the forest, Miss Hathaway. My name is Mark Templeton. Well, the resemblance is striking. Well, we're often mistaken for one another. I'm looking for the Clampets, and my brother said that you could put me in touch with them. Indeed I can. I'll give you their address and telephone number. As a matter of fact, if you need transportation, I'll be happy to drive you over. I have a car, but I would appreciate an introduction. Oh, well, the pleasure is mine. As soon as Mr. Drysdale returns, we'll drive over. <laughs> All right, what's going on here? Oh, Mr. Drysdale, Miss Hathaway is entertaining a very handsome Navy man in your office. Oh, she is, is she? Go well, back to your desks. And no coffee breaks today. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, this is a bank, not the USO. Bring it up. Chief, may I present Lieutenant Mark Templeton of the United States Navy? Oh, are you here to open an account? No, sir. Make a loan? No, sir. Shove off, sailor. <laughs> Chief! Anchors away, both of you. I'm a busy man. But, Chief... Out! Oh, Out! Oh. Well, Lieutenant, I, I am terribly sorry. Mr. Drysdale's been in a foul mood ever since interest rates went down. How's the bear poultice coming, Doctor? Got it all cooked, Ellie. Now we'll just let it cool a mite. It sure smells strong. What's in it? Well, your base is skunk oil and turpentine. Then you thicken that with sulfur, dog bane, stinkweed, rock salt, hog bristles, and minced beetles. And then right at the last, I stir in a double handful of diced cockleburrs and night crawlers. Now, while it's 
cooling. We'll take his temperature and we'll check his pulse. <gasps> it's gone! Great gut got it! Jethro! Did you eat what was in that pot? Yeah. Now, from the way it tasted, you must have cooked it. I cooked that. You're slipping, Granny. That was all I could do to choke it down. Greetings, Mr. Clappert. Howdy, Miss Jean. I'll bet this gentleman looks familiar to you. <laughs> he does, for a fact. You're that preacher from back in the hills, Matthew Templeton. Well, actually, I'm his brother, Mark. Aren't they lookalikes? Like two peas in a pod. I understand. There was a little mix-up with my brother. Here was for a fact. Granny had him and my daughter Ellie halfway down the aisle before she found out he was married. Matthew was awfully upset about that. <laughs> Not as upset as Granny. <laughs> well, come on inside and meet the family. Beautiful home you have here, Mr. Clampett. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, a lot more than we need. Jed, I'm out of rock salt. And... It's the married preacher that nearly broke Ellie's heart. Keep your gun on him, Jim. No, they just look alike, Granny. That's the preacher's brother. Granny, this is Lieutenant Mark Templeton. And he's not married. <laughs> I'm pleased to meet you, Granny. You ain't got a wife? No, ma'am. You're absolutely 100% single? Yes, ma'am. Uh, engaged? No, ma'am. I'm glad to make your acquaintance. Take him into the parlor, Miss Jane. Keep your gun on him, Jed. What for? We ain't letting this one get away. <laughs> Ellie, darling, quick, get into your prettiest dresses. Ooh, ooh. What in the world are you doing? Cooking up a new poultice for my buyer. But, Ellie, I'm not a rock snow. And that's what sops up the skunk oil. Let's get this outside before it smells up the whole house. Company's here to see you. Who is it? Remember that handsome preacher back in the hills? Sure do. Well, this is his brother. And he's bigger and handsomer and singular. And he's here to see me? He ain't here to see me. Now get upstairs and do some what I... Look, Granny. My bear's up and gone. He must be well. Good. Now get upstairs and scrub yourself with live soap. It's the only thing that'll cut that skunk oil. Yes, I'm okay. I declare you are gamier than a goat in August. <laughs> Ellie is a perfectly lovely girl, Lieutenant. You'll... Oh, here she comes now. <laughs> oh, get going, Ellie. That was Ellie? No, no, Nellie. She's our hired girl. Poor thing, she was emptying the garbage and fell in it. <laughs> oh. Ellie's up in her boudoir doing some fancy sewing and jotting down some of her famous recipes and having her picture took for the cover of a beauty magazine. <laughs> I'll go tell her you're here. <laughs> you, you'll like Ellie, Lieutenant. She's really something. <laughs> So's Granny. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Miss Holloway? Um, she went up to the Clampets with Lieutenant Templeton. He's a friend of the Clampets. Well, he's gone up there to meet Ellie May. Lucky girl. And I threw him out of my office. Oh, this is terrible. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hey, I'll come in, Mr. Drysdale. Thank you, Mr. Clampets. Well, what do you think of my boy, Lieutenant Templeton? Your boy? Well, did Miss Hathaway tell you that I'm the one who sent him over to meet Ellie May? Well, no, sir, she didn't. Well, now, I handpicked that lad from the entire United States Navy. You sure picked a dandy. Well, I told you I'd be the one to find the right man for Ellie. You know him well, do you? He's like my own son. Is that a fact? Why, yes, Mark and I... Gee! What are you doing here? Well, you may ask. Shame on you. You didn't tell Mr. Clampett everything. Well, I would. Never mind, I won't embarrass you. Let's go. Well, it's the terrible-tempered Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> you never forget, do you? I had to speak rather sharply to him in the office. He's always been a sensitive lad. Well, see you later, Mark, my boy. Mark, my boy? Yeah, Mr. Drysdale said you're like a son to him. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, you're right. Brother is better. I'm a little young to be a father image. <laughs> Let's go. 
Well, here comes Ellie May. Now you two can get acquainted, Mark. Wow. Ah, Ellie May. Allow me to present Lieutenant Mark Templeton of the United States Navy. Howdy, Mark. Pleased to meet you. The pleasure is mine, Ellie May. <laughs> now that I've brought you together, may the ship of happiness carry you across the sea of tranquility into the harbor of bliss. Bon voyage, my children. Chief, you are the biggest phony, the lowest fink, the most unprincipled scoundrel who ever lived. Thanks. I needed that. Let's go. Now then, you young and sit right here in the parlor and get acquainted. Well, thank you, Mr. Climbeth. Hey, lady, if you want to serve refreshments, there is cider and icebox. Thank you, Paul. Nice gold glass of cider sounds pretty good to me right now. How about you, Granny? Granny? Granny! What do you want, Jed? How about a cold glass of cider? Yeah, bring me a tall one. <laughs> now, Mrs. Templeton, there's a few questions I would like to ask you. Granny. What do you want, Jed? I need you in the kitchen. You young ones will have to excuse me. He needs me. He's a widower, you know. It's sad when a man ain't got a wife to look after him. Pitiful. I hope that never happens. Granny. I'm coming, Jen. <laughs> just amazing how much you look like your brother. Well, it's just amazing how much you look like the hired girl. Well, we ain't got no hired girl. I kind of figured it couldn't be two as pretty as you. What do you want, Jed? I want you to leave them young'uns alone. Wouldn't you like to know something about the man that is proposing to your daughter? Granny, they ain't even shook hands yet. How do you know for sure? That fella's a sailor. These fast workers. Granny, will you just leave him alone for a spell? Jed, it's a father's duty to know something about the man that's courting his daughter. Well, I don't know. For starters, he's nice looking, he's single, he's an officer, and Mr. Drysdale handpicked him out of the whole United States Navy. Ain't that awful dangerous, spending so much time underwater? Well, we'd go through a very thorough training course, the Frogman program, before we ever start working with the porpoises and whales. How do you work with them? Right now, we're conducting experiments and communicating with them. We think we might be able to interpret their language. You mean they talk? In a sense, yes. They emit a series of sounds which we're trying to decode and understand. Bet you I could understand them. <laughs> what makes you think so? Well... Pa says if you can understand Jethro, you can understand anything. I gotta do some chores outside. Yeah, yeah, you run along, Jed. Now, before I go, I want you to promise me that you'll stay in this kitchen and leave them young'uns alone. I promise. <laughs> Granny, can we have that cider now? Oh, sure, honey. How are you two getting along? Oh, fine and dandy. You like him? Sure do. You know what? He spends a lot of time in the ocean. I suppose he does. On the boat. No, ma'am, underwater, swimming around. Why would he want to do that? Well, he's learning to talk to critters that live in the ocean. He talks to fish? Well, sort of. Whales and porpoises and such. Why, well, he can stay underwater for better than an hour. Lame sakes. That ain't human. Can I be of any help? Oh, oh no, no. Hey, Ellie, you take the cider into the parlor. I want to have a word with Mark here. Yes, I'm Granny. My granddaughter tells me that you spend lots of time swimming around in the ocean. Yes, ma'am, that's right. She tells me that you talk to the critters who live in the ocean. Well, I try to. She tells me that you can stay under the water for better than an hour. That's right, I can. Ain't that hard to do? Not for me. I'm a frogman. You're a what? I'm a naval frogman. Well, uh, excuse me. Oh, no. Hey, Gray, the second batch of stew is better than the first, not as salty. Hey, Gray, what's the matter? Oh, Jethro, I just had a terrible shock. What is it? Your cousin Ellie has fell for a freak. 
A freak? He's half man and half frog. Huh? From the waist up, he's beautiful. But from the navel down, he's pure frog. Ah! <laughs> See, Elliot, being a frogman isn't as dangerous as it sounds. We're carefully trained, and the Navy provides us with the very finest gear. This wetsuit keeps me warm, even at depths where the ocean temperatures might be 30 or 40 degrees. And these flippers give me great underwater propulsion. But say, I got an idea. You have a swimming pool? Sure do, a great big one. Suppose I demonstrate it for you. Oh, fine and dandy. Could I put on my swimming suit and join you? Great. Where's the pool? Oh, around back. And there's a dressing room where you can change. See you there. something else. What do you mean? Ellie, remember when we had such high hopes for his brother Matthew and he turned out to be married? Yes, sir. But Mark is single. And I found out why. Get a grip on yourself. He's a frog man. Oh, I know that. He told me. Don't it worry you? Well, yes, sir, it does. But he says it's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Well, that's easy for him to say. <laughs> Mark says there's lots of frogmen in the Navy, and they do real important jobs. Well, like when the astronauts drops in the ocean, it's the frogmen that rescues them. Well, I ain't saying they ain't useful, but you don't want to marry one. Why not? Why not? Have you ever seen a frogman? No, ma'am. Well, all right, go ahead. One look will cure you. <laughs> Poor darling, she's in for an awful shock. Of course, it could be worse. Thank goodness the top half ain't frog. Jethro, you seen anything of Granny? Not lately. I sure wish she'd show up and cook some vittles for our company. Don't be too anxious. Did you taste that stew she made? No. Nope. It was awful. <laughs> hey, Granny, I'm hungry. Get out of here, boy. I got a serious family problem to take up with your Uncle Jim. Ain't you gonna cook no riddles? No, I ain't. Now, scat. Granny, I think it'd be kind of nice if you was to fix something for Ellie's date. I don't cook bugs. <laughs> bugs? I ain't too sure of that after eating your stew. Get out of here! <laughs> well, Jed Clampett, so you didn't want me to ask that Templeton boy any serious questions about himself. That's right. I suppose it's all right with you if he just goes ahead and marries Ellie May. After a proper courtship, could be. Some courtship. If she kisses him, she'll get warts. <laughs> warts? I reckon that they'll be married in the cement pond, and you will just float your daughter up to him on a lily pad. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Mark Templeton. You don't know one thing about him. Granny, I told you, Mr. Drysdale handpicked him. Where'd he find him? In a pet shop. <laughs> that don't make sense. It'll make sense when your grandchildren turn out to be tadpoles. <laughs> you been at your white lightning? No, but it's a good idea. Let's have it. Not till you explain all that crazy talk. One picture is worth a thousand words. Go down to the cement pond and take a look for yourself. Take a look at what? At what Mr. Drysdale wants your daughter to marry. And hang on to that jug. You're gonna need it. <laughs> Boy, 
Boy, you ought to see that Mark Templeton swim. He can really shoot through the water. So could you if you had his hind legs. Hind legs? Oh, well, anyway, Paul, he wants to know, can he take me out to Vittles tonight? Why, sure he can. Good. Don't let him order for you, honey. You'll wind up with a plate of grasshoppers. Granny, I think you better go lay down for a spell. I'll drink to that. Let's have it. Mr. Clampett, would you and Granny like to join Ellie and me for dinner? Oh, no thanks, Mark. You young'uns won't want us tagging along. I thought we'd hop down to the beach. That figures. By the way, uh, do you have some shoe polish I could borrow? You betcha. I'll fetch it, Jed. It beats me how you can squeeze into them shoes. <laughs> Your feet must be killing <laughs> What do you mean by that? Don't pay no attention to her. The way she's acting today, this must have been a bad batch. <laughs> Lunatic has bought a log cabin. No electricity, no telephone. That doesn't really sound that crazy for Grandpa. Matt Fleming went in search of his grandfather. Isn't this great? Oh, it's terrific. Oh, there's money in it. What he found. You can see I'm not a bonder. I'm a lawyer. Was himself. Maybe for the first time, you feel alive. It's taken me 20 years to become a part of your life. I'm staying right here. Mel Harris and Edward Asner star in Out of the Woods. Premieres tonight at 8 on Hallmark Channel. Y'all come back now, dear. This has been a Filmways presentation.